Ta-da, let's go get it mounted up. All right, guys, we're gonna crimp some bigger wire here. We're gonna crimp some lugs on. We're gonna make some homemade lugs. We're gonna get them crimped on and heat shrunk on. We're running some of this two gauge cable around the Jeep in different places. So we've got a few of these to do. Let's get started. So obviously you can use the lugs, but uh, we have, I don't have the right size lugs for this number two gauge. So we're gonna use some 5 16 copper tubing. And we're just gonna measure it at an inch and a half right here. We're gonna go over here and cut it. We're gonna come over here and trim these burrs off. Now you can use this to cut it, but this tends to kind of roll the edges to the inside. Um, and you want the full diameter of this when you're trying to push this over your wire. So that's why I cut it on the bandsaw. And then we'll just use this little reamer to kind of clean out the ends a little bit. Now, 5 sixteenths converted to a decimal so I can make it work with my caliper. Let's just take five, divide it by 16, and that gives us 0 0.31, okay? So if we take this 5 sixteenths tubing, just to make sure, it is 0 0.31, so that's perfect. So we're gonna get a drill bit of the same size. This is a 5 16 drill bit, 0 0.31. Okay, so it's all adding up, that's good. Now, we measured the, and cut this at an inch and a half. What I did was I measured this 5 16 drill bit shank at three quarters of an inch. So that's half the distance here. We're gonna slide that on and hold it right there. Now we're gonna kinda hold it right on that mark. We're gonna take our hammer and we know that the drill bit comes up to about halfway, so we're gonna start hammering out here. Kinda of work our way in. Now don't hammer against the drill bit too much because it'll cut through the copper. Copper's obviously pretty soft, right? There we go. Keep it on this drill bit because this just makes it easier to handle. We're going to take our center punch, put it right in the middle. There's a good center punch. I recommend drilling a small hole first. Now we'll drill the size of hole that we want for our bolt that we're going to be attaching this lug to. And so the great part about being able to customize your own bolt hole size is let's just say this was the size of lug hole that I had and I was trying to put this two gauge wire on a bolt that size, it's kind of wallowing around there. Now this is of course an extreme example if I was even put on something smaller, that's a lot of space and I'd have to use a lot of washers to try to get good contact area there. Now we can just pick the size of drill bit we want for the size of bolt that we're putting in whatever size that might be, and go ahead and drill it out. And then this is a nice tight fit on whatever bolt we're putting it on. Okay, we'll come over to our batter here. We'll just measure these bolts that we're attaching our pieces to. And try not to arc anything here. We'll just make it a little bit bigger than this, but that's 0.25, that's a quarter inch. We're gonna go just a tiny bit bigger than that. All right, now this one will do, this is 0.277. So it's just a little bit bigger than 0.25. All right, take our file and just clean up this back side here. Make sure the front side's clean. Now to keep these from corroding, we'll put some fluid film or some battery CRC uh, battery corrosion preventative on it. Okay, let's get this on. We're gonna measure this back about that far right there. Now, of course, there's lots of ways to crimp lugs on cables. This is the Harbor Freight crimper, hydraulic crimper. And these are the two gauge. That is not the biggest one it comes with. It comes with several dies. The biggest ones are zero. And the smallest one is 14. So it gives you a good range. All right, so we're going to kind of, we don't really want to twist these because twisting them tends to make them bunch up bigger. We just try to get as many in here as we can. 
There's a couple escapees. Can we get them in there maybe? Oh, we got them all in there, but these little stragglers here. We don't want that contacting anything, so we're going to cut them off. Okay, we got it on there. Now we're going to go ahead and pump this up. Now, So you want to close it first and then pump it up. Now you want to pay attention to this hydraulic crimper because you may want your crimp to spread a certain direction in relation to your lug right here, or the lug end right here. So that when you crimp it between here and here, the crimp actually spreads that way and that way, sort of along this and that. So what I like to do, because I don't want my crimp uh, going up and down, because if I want to lay it against a flat surface, then I have a bunch of copper sticking down right here from the crimp. So what I like to do is have it crimp this way where the crimp spreads that way and that way to the side, sort of in parallel with this. So what we'll do is we'll turn this sideways, put it in the crimper like this, and then when we crimp it, the crimp will actually spread to the sides. So I'm going to kind of hold my thumb on it till I get it tightened down here. Okay, and you want to make sure to hold your cable inside so that as you crimp it and tighten it down, the cable doesn't fall out or come out halfway. Okay, now I'm going to two-hand it here. Okay, it's probably not going to get much better than that. We'll try it a little bit more. Okay, and you can almost see these dies come together right there. Okay, then we'll just take the hydraulic pressure off. And sometimes the die comes out with the crimp because it kind of sticks. Okay, and that looks pretty good, yeah? The crimp comes out to the sides just like I wanted it. And you know, it may not matter if the crimp spreads up and down in some cases, but if you have a lot of copper and it's, you know, it's spreading pretty far, um, that may get in the way later. So that's a good solid crimp. That's never coming apart. I'm super happy with that. If you're doing a lot of bigger wire projects, this tool is a good investment. Now we're just going to put, this is half inch heat shrink over this two gauge cable. Seems to work well. So we're just going to measure it from about there to about there. I don't want to make it real long uh, just because I don't want to cover much of the red up because I do want to recognize this as a red and a hot cable. So we're going to pull it back a little bit just to make sure it'll lay flat against the battery uh, mount. And of course it would be nice to use red, but I don't have red. So we're just going to use the color I have here. Okay, hey, let's see what kind of fit this is. We've got our lug on there. It's a pretty good fit. Okay, these obviously don't warrant much torque at all. I'm just using this little quarter inch drive Pittsburgh ratchet. Okay, so let's just do a little test. This is one I kind of messed up because I didn't use a pilot hole with a smaller bit. I just used the bigger bit. I got it right in the center, but it walked a little bit. So I'm not using that for anything really. Okay, and what we're gonna use to coat these is this blaster brand, they call it Surface Shield. Okay, that's kind of what it looks like. It doesn't really change the color of it, but it is all wet and it is clear. So now again, we're going to use our blaster surface shield. Cool. Now we've got this breaker we're using for our switch control. It acts like it's just going to kind of flow around both sides. So I don't have to worry about the back side, which is good. And now on this side of the Jeep, where we have our control box, here's the lug that I made right here for the positive one. So I worried the surface shield might cause a problem with plastics, but it says it will not harm most paint, plastic, and rubber surfaces. Okay, I'm still going to go ahead and wipe that up where it spilled kind of around just so it's not sitting there. 
All right, we're in the Jeep. We're gonna put the key in, we're gonna turn it on. Now, this is the aux beam controller right here. It has eight different switches in eight different positions. Sorry about the glare there. And so I'm gonna turn the key on and that should power that on. Yep, just like it's supposed to. Now, this is eight different functions you can have. And so this one is what we have hooked up to the lights up front. We're gonna turn it on and see how the little red light comes on. We can turn it off. So let's look up front here and see if it works. I'm gonna turn it on again. And there's the LEDs. Now these are the rigid brand. These are not cheap lights, obviously, but they do work really well. And uh, they are pulling four amps between the two of them. So both of these are pulling um, just under four amps actually. So that five amp fuse is perfect for this. So an upcoming video is gonna be about how I install this aux beam control panel right here, how I route all the cabling and the wires, um, the control box, how I mount that, um, how we run the power wires and the control wires for that, and how easy this is. It's, a, it's some work ahead of time, but man, this makes life so much easier if you ever wanna hook up any accessories. We've got this roof rack if you watch my other videos. We've got a bunch of lights on it, and uh, I'm gonna call this Jeep now the disco ball because it's got so many lights on it, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna hook up all those lights so we can turn on lights from the side of the Jeep or the other side or these big front lights or the back lights when we're cooking out in the back. Um, we can turn on lights back there, so it'll be nice because this panel gives us lots of options. And uh, so if we want to have overhead lights uh, on, we can just hit that button and this is going to be really sweet. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe. That video will be coming up pretty soon. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.